Hello, everyone. I'm Alberto Espe from the University of Cincinnati. And I am asked to provide what is the highlight of the International Parkinson's and Movement Disorders Society Congress meeting. Uh, we had this meeting in Copenhagen just uh, this past week, thereabouts. And uh, it was a very important meeting, not only because so many good ideas were presented, but also because some new idea was introduced. The key concept that we're now hearing increasingly more about is this idea that we are entering into the era of the biological definition or biological classification of Parkinson's. Biological definition of Parkinson's seems a bit of an oxymoron to begin with because it's well established that there isn't a Parkinson's disease, but many Parkinson diseases, and therefore there can't be a unifying biology for them all. Now, there, there is a relatively common pathology, but there can't be a unifying biology. And so the first concept with this idea of a biological definition of Parkinson's is that it violates something that we have already established, which is that we must not reduce the biological diversity and complexity of Parkinson's into a single test that somehow can be interpreted as representing the diversity of biologies or biological disruptions that could lead to Parkinson's disease. So that's one important aspect. The second thing is that how we get to a biological definition is by having a really good test of pathology. It's a test that can be, though, ascertained from tissue of living individuals, not from autopsy. And that's a major difference. But this test called the seed amplification assay for synuclein is only a qualitative test. It gives us a presence or absence response, a yes, no response to the question, does the tissue I'm examining have synuclein in an aggregated state? That would be a pathologic state. And if the test is positive, then we conclude that there is aggregated synuclein in that tissue. And if that individual being tested has Parkinson's disease, that correlation is pretty high. And so for now is the best test that we have to identify pathology in an individual that has symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Now, this test, as I'll explain in a moment, can only tell us that the pathology is present, but it cannot quantify how much of it there is, nor, and this is very important, how little of the monomeric soluble functional version of the protein there is. Synuclein, monomeric synuclein is normal. And from nonomeric synuclein, it turns into oligomers, it turns into pathology which is a cross beta configuration. The test of seeding is one important test to determine the presence of pathology because seeding is a physical mechanism of crystallization. And seeding as it's designed to identify a tissue with pathology requires one key ingredient. There are, there are two other ingredients, but the key ingredient is supersaturation. The concentration of the monomeric synuclein in the solution, in the reagent, is 100 million times above what's the normal physiologic concentration in humans. And it's a little lower, but it's still in picograms per ml in picomolar in humans with Parkinson's disease. The milligrams per ml concentration 
is a jump from picomolar to millimolar, which essentially is the one followed by seven, eight, zero. So that's the 100 million times concentration that I just spoke about. So it's given when you have this highly saturated reagent and you add a drop of a tissue that contains synuclein in an aggregated fashion, it forces the crystallization. The nucleation barrier for the soluble to insoluble transformation is lowered and the CD mechanism proceeds and it's a passive process, just like what you see when you are looking through a window in a cold winter day and you see these crystals forming, these are kind of snowflakes forming, that's a process of crystallization. And in the test tube of the seed amplification assay, that's essentially what happens. There is crystallization of this and that accompanied by a fluorescent uh, dye, it allows us to see it. And that's a positive curve. That's what you see in the graphs. So if you have a positive test, you've identified that tissue that is sitting in the tube, not sitting in the brain. And the concern that we now have with this test is that it's telling us, A, that Parkinson's is there. And it may or may not be the case because this test is going to be positive in many people who are reacting against a variety of exposures by aggregating synuclein. It's a normal reaction. The aggregation of synuclein is normal under a variety of exposures as we uh, as we essentially age. But the issue is, though, that having a test that amplifies that signal from a tissue is simply giving us an opportunity to say, yep, synuclein is part of the problem here. Well, synuclein is compromised. It's becoming pathology. That's it. Because, though, it is a very good test, it can correlate beautifully with the diagnosis, but what it doesn't correlate with, and this is very important, it doesn't correlate with any symptoms. It doesn't tell us whether individuals with Parkinson's will have motor versus non-motor features as the predominant manifestation, whether they have REM behavior disorder or not, whether they have dementia or not dementia. It doesn't correlate with the severity of the disease. And it doesn't allow you to determine prognosis, for instance, cannot be used for monitoring and it cannot be used, therefore, for biological subtyping. So the test is a good test of pathology, but because it uses the seeding principles, which are not operational in the brain, cannot be thought of a test of pathogenesis in much less a test of biology. So pathology is not equal to pathogenesis and definitely not equal to biology. So we have a good test of pathology and it's simply a screen measure perhaps that can be used at a population level, but it's not going to help with determining what at an individual level might be the pathogenesis for that individual to be accruing pathology nor what is the biology of an individual that's going to be different to other people with Parkinson's disease. So I think the key message here is that at the International Congress uh, of the Movement Disorder Society, we had four sessions on this concept. And there is a sense that this is going to get us to a new level of knowledge. And I would argue that is simply a good test for pathology, but it cannot be used to define Parkinson's at a biological level. Furthermore, it cannot be used as a staging system. And that's another concept that was raised at the Congress. This is not a test that one would want to use to somehow determine if we're going to have X or Y molecular therapy deployed an individual because it's just a common denominator that we're identifying. And it cannot tell us at what stage in the disease anyone is because this test will be either positive or negative. And it can only be negative if you eliminate synuclein from the body. And that is something that, of course, uh, would not be desirable. So uh, in conclusion, what you have heard at this meeting and what I'm 
happy to highlight for you in a critical fashion, of course, is to tell you that you will hear a lot about this biological definition of Parkinson's or biological classification and staging, and it's based on the synuclein assay, which is only a qualitative yes-no type of test. It is not a demonstration of pathogenesis. It is not a representation of the biology of Parkinson's. It's a brilliant uh, laboratory resource but it's not a demonstration of what happens in the brain of people with Parkinson's disease. So let's keep that very clear. There is no seeding in the brain of people of pathology. Pathology is not seeding, at least not the mechanism that we know as seeding, which again required a concentration that is way above physiologic levels. Anything supraphysiologic in an experimental model will be toxic, will look bad, but it is not a representation of what happens in the brain. And with that, I wanted to thank you for your attention. I'm always happy to have discussions with any of you. You can reach me at my email, alberto.espe at uc.edu. And I thank Vumedi for making this available to all of you.